According to DNA data studies, around 16 million people today are descendants of Genghis Khan. That's 0.5% of all men in the world, which probably justifies 50% of 10,000 of you voting for me to do this flag. You just want to learn about your great, 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 great grandfather? Today, the flag of Mongolia looks like this. A vertical tricolor, red, blue, and red, with some symbols in gold slash yellow on the left side. We'll get to the meaning of these symbols and of the colors in a second. But first, let's take Genghis Khan as an excuse to go back a few hundred years and take a look at the origins of the Mongolian flag. Genghis Khan ruled from 1162 to 1227. Now, the official records for Mongolian flags only start much, much later, in the 1900s. So, a lot of the following flags are projections, or just pure speculation. But the fierce Mongol hordes must have had to identify themselves in battle somehow. And the Khan was likely to represent his rule through some type of standard, like we see in a lot of paintings of the time. So it's very likely that they had some type of flag. And according to some research, it must have looked similar to these next ones. This is the first flag associated with the Mongols from around 1310. It is said to be the flag of Genghis Khan still, but it is only a recreation. Although ancient writings talk about white and black flags with nine tails. White color was sacred at that time, and black was the color of gods of death. A fitting color choice for the hordes, I guess. Genghis Khan is supposed to have come from the Bori Jinjin tribe, which some say used a white banner with a falcon on it. Since Genghis Khan used a falcon, some people argue that this symbol was his, a falcon with a crown in its claws. In fact, we see something close to a falcon, with a little imagination, in this next flag, which along with this one displaying a sun, moon, and fire, both in red and blue, were displayed in a festival in Mongolia in 2006 to celebrate the 800th anniversary of the birth of the Mongol Empire. But maybe what I'm seeing as a falcon is just a version of the flames on its side. In 2008, the Mongolian Military Museum also produced a number of flags, which they say represented the Mongolian Empire in the 14th century. These two, orange and purple with a white horse and a white bird. And these two, blue and white slash yellow with the nation's symbol on it. Oh, and guess what? The anniversary festival also made another book where they show a bunch of other similar flags, which they attribute to the early stages of the Mongolian Empire. Most of them are red and blue, displaying a golden figure, either a horse, a falcon, or a bow and arrow with a variant carrying the national symbol. But these are just projections and recreations. I'm sure the Mongolians must have had some type of historical basis and they didn't just make these up, but they are very far from official and I honestly can't assure to you that they are historically accurate. Going back to the facts, we need to look at the Catalan Atlas, a book created in 1375. There is no flag for Genghis Khan, but there are some flags for what I think were the successor states of the Mongol Empire. The Empire of the Grand Khan, the Ilkhanat of Persia, the Chagatai Khanat, and the Golden Horde. In the Grand Khan and in the last one, we see at least the symbol of the moon, present in the recreations. So, to sum up. The early Mongol Empire flags are somewhat impossible to depict due to the lack of historic records, but they were most likely blue and red, depicting horses for the hordes, falcons for Genghis Khan, and bows because I guess they used bows. Then there's an interregnum of about 600 years for Mongol flags. The empire was gone 
and Mongolia became reduced to successor states, which divided the former lands of the Khan. So we have to move forward in time to the 1900s, arriving at the start of modern Mongolia. These are official. We know 100% for a fact that they were in use. During the fall of the Qing dynasty in China, the Bogd Khanat of Mongolia declared its independence. And so, from 1911 to 1920, this was the flag of Mongolia, yellow and orange, and displaying the national symbol. In 1920-21, the Republic of China briefly reoccupied the region, and so the flag in use was technically the Chinese five-colored stripes. But in 1921, there was a communist revolution which took back sovereignty. The provisional government used this red flag, with the yellow sun and moon, similar to the current Chinese flag. After re-establishing independence fully, the original flag was still used for a few years, but only as a formality. The kingdom now became a people's republic, and in 1924, its constitution defined a new flag, red with the state emblem at the center. Throughout its existence, the Mongolian People's Republic changed its flag a few times. From 1930 to 1940, they implemented this one, a horizontal tricolor, red and blue, with a beige circle in the middle carrying the national emblem. From 1940 to 45, the third flag was created, emitting the national symbol. In it, we can see the traditional communist red star along with a horseman, sun, and a few animals which I imagine are common to the region. On each side, it is written Mongol People's Republic. The fourth and final flag was in use from 1945 to 1992. It is pretty much the same as the current one, with one big exception, a yellow star on top of the national emblem, one can imagine to represent the communist regime at the time. So when the regime came to an end, the star was removed. And that's how we get to the current flag adopted in 1992, with the blue representing the eternal blue sky, simultaneously being a traditional Mongolian color, as we saw before, and the red symbolizing Mongolia's harsh environment, but perhaps also the remnants of the communist regime. On the left is the national symbol, the Soyombo. Let's deconstruct it. Now, before I do a quick disclaimer, every source seems to describe this symbol in its own way. The Soyombo symbol was created by a Buddhist leader over 300 years ago, who some people say was at the service of the Chinese, who knows, and apparently a lot of religious scripts and records were burned, so there's really no way to know the meaning of the symbols at 100% accuracy, but this is what I could find. The three flames on top, looking suspiciously like the symbol for the Rebel Alliance in Star Wars, represent the past, present, and future. Below it is the sun and the moon, showing that Mongolia will exist for eternity. But it is also said that these three symbols, the sun, moon and flames were ancient symbols of the Mongolians and the Huns before they adopted Buddhism, like we saw in these projections of earlier flags. In ancient Mongolian symbolism, an arrow and spear pointing to the ground meant death. So some say that the two downward pointing triangles signify death to the enemies of the Mongols. The two horizontal stripes slash rectangles are said to symbolize honesty and justice. In the center is the yin and yang, the symbol for Taoism, which according to its philosophy, represents two opposite forces, light and dark, whose interaction influences everything in the universe. However, apparently in Mongolian symbolism, the figures in the yin yang circle represent two fish, which, because fish never close their eyes, signify reason and wisdom. The two vertical rectangles may represent a fortress, recalling the old Mongolian proverb, the friendship of two men is stronger than stone walls. This symbol was adopted as the official symbol of the Mongolian People's Republic by the first People's Great Kural in 1924, but its usage dates back further like we saw in that first flag from 1911. It's because the Soyombo symbol was already a part of a special Mongolian alphabet called precisely the Soyombo script. 
something created by Zanabazar, a Buddhist leader in Mongolia, who died in 1723. Legend has it that Zanabazar saw the script written for him in the sky. Regardless of the truth, I think we can reach the conclusion that it is a gathering of symbols that throughout history had a significance for the Mongolian people. As for the colors, they too were used to represent the nation throughout time, changing in its combinations but lasting until today, in red, blue and yellow. So that was a brief overlook at the history and meaning of the flag of Mongolia. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a comment below. We've been having a lot of fun talking to each other on the channel Discord server, so if you want to join, just click the link in the description and get to know your fellow subscribers. Remember to subscribe if you want to catch future videos, and I will see you next time.